Hello everybody, welcome back to the seventh Lego Room Rebuild update. Jordan here. Today we are going to be finishing construction on the tables. We've got the frames built, now they need the tabletops. It's looking great down here. I've been buzzing around, moving stuff around, just sort of envisioning what it's going to look like as we move forward. Obviously it already looks pretty good and could not be happier with the results to be to be honest with you i mean it, it just looks amazing and now after this video today we're going to be able to truly visualize what it's going to look like with the shelving right when you walk down and then the city in the larger section of the room right over here yeah so we're heading back to my buddy's house uh, stings bricks and uh he's going to help us cut all the malamine for the tabletops Wow, what a beautiful person. What an, what an amazing guy uh, helping us out with our tables here for the Lego room. It's going to look awesome. Yeah, so let's roll on down to his house there, fire up the saws, get some malamine cut, and then come back here, get that malamine put on top of the table frames, and then we're going to have an amazing table set up for the future Lego city known as Brickminton. Woohoo! So we're cutting some malamine, and we're also putting the edging on it with the iron here. Tim's really good at ironing apparently. And uh, it just cleans up that edge because this will be exposed on the side of the table, right? Look at that edge, woo! All right, so I'm back from Sting's Bricks. Yeah, we got all the Malamine tops cut and all of the edging looking neat and tidy. Why do we do the edging? Because it's gonna look like this now around the edge of the table, right? You're not gonna see the open exposed edge like, hmm, like this right here. So you're not gonna see that. It's gonna be all clean like this here. Now my vehicle could fit two pieces of malamine in it. Everything else is too big. So these are the two pieces of malamine that we brought back. Piece number one, piece number two. <laughs> Pretty funny. So obviously all of these tops are gonna to be covered in the malamine, but these two pieces here do a great job of representing how big these are gonna be. So it's gonna hang over, oh, it's not quite centered, about three inches on either side. So about like that maybe, maybe a little bit more. So about like that there. And that's nice because all of the edging is gonna be, you know, like finished malamine, which is really cool. And also because it hangs over a bit, it's gonna help hide some of the two by six frames. And it's just optimal really. So we used five eighths malamine. Why did we use five eighths malamine? Five eighths malamine is approximately the same price as plywood right now. Incredible, hey? Also this is fabricated stuff. So it's all level, it's all smooth finish, modular buildings or Lego base plates or whatever we're putting on top of these tables, glide as you push it, sort of slide, I guess is the better word. As you put something on there, it'll slide into place very easily. So that's why I've decided to go with Malamine. Also, if there's nothing there, it's just a nice white finish rather than being a plywood finish. It's gonna look a lot better. However, I will say, when we cover all of these tabletops here, it's gonna be a lot of white. I guarantee the camera that we use is gonna have a hard time with what we call exposure because it is going to be like white. White walls, white tabletops, it's gonna be crazy. And henceforth, today shall be known as International Lego Tabletop Day because today is the day that the Lego room is getting new Lego tables and we are gonna to be topping these frames with tabletops. Woohoo! <laughs> Very exciting. You know what's really cool? Stings Bricks is actually delivering them here with a buddy. We got a third person to help us carry them down here into the Lego room. Like, such an amazing thing. And you know what? For that amazing gesture, guess what I got? I got them each a Tim Hortons gift card, a little Tim's card, and then a good old Canadian thank you right here. Some donuts. Ooh, those look good. All right, who's ready to see 
the tabletops. It's very white in here. Very white indeed. <laughs> this is crazy. Look at the tabletops. Woo! Don't they look good? Wild, hey? Still lots of work though because our tabletops, of course, are just freely sitting on the table frames. So, of course, they're going to move around, right? So, I've got to screw everything in spot, and that's just going to push everything down and make it all level because, of course, the wood is not perfectly level. I mean, it's pretty much perfect in most places. Like, look at that. That's, that's smooth, right? Here, there's a little bit of a gap. It's got to be screwed down. we got to screw all these smaller spots in. Also, I need to pull out the jigsaw. And we need to put this insert over there. And then I need to cut our notch to accommodate the pillar. But there's just a few areas that need to be, well, all areas, I guess, that need to be screwed down just so that everything is flush. Now, how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna use screws, of course. But first we're gonna drill uh, pilot holes using a drill bit. And then we're going to screw down. So probably only gonna be uh, four per top, probably one in each corner and then the small, tiny little inserts, like these guys here, we'll just do one on each side. So four screws per uh, sheet really should be fairly easy to do. Uh, just measure it and make sure everything's aligned in a 10 inch or five inch increment, right? Multiple of five to accommodate LIGO base plates and then put these things all into the table frames and hopefully it turns out. I mean, it's gonna be a lot of work and a lot of meticulous work because I want the measurement to be absolutely perfect because that's how you accommodate Lego. Everything has to be perfect, right? It has to be exactly five inches or 10 inches to accommodate the classic 10 inch by 10 inch base plate. So you get lots of work, let's get started. So things are going smoothly, I think. You know, I've got this table locked in spot. It's just got two screws in it. And then this one here has two screws in it as well. One right here. Look at that though. And then over here, I put two screws in this board. This board seems to be a little bit curved almost, but only one here. Little millimeter off there, but you know what? Not a big deal. You know, you can be so particular about this, but then in the end, when you cover it with Lego, you know, if your screws are a bit off or whatever, it's, it's not going to matter. Like right now, I'm being very meticulous about it. I'm using a level. I'm uh, pre-drilling the holes. I'm countersinking the holes. I'm making sure it's all done correctly. But I'm going to look back and be like, wow, I did a great job. But I don't think I actually needed to do you that good of a job. That's uh, four and a quarter. Putting you at uh, five and three quarter. So we'll go... Uh, Five and a quarter in for our pilot hole. I don't know if that math makes sense, but you know what I really need everybody? Is uh, a tool belt. So probably gonna buy one tonight because like I have all these different drill bits that I'm just hauling around and passing them around and all that. I need a, I need a, like a Tim the Tool Man Taylor tool belt. Also, we're gonna go see, what's it called? Dumbledore tonight? What's it called? I have no idea, it's fantastic. The Rise of Dumbledore? Like Dumbledore that. the Great. Dumbledore the Great One. Sure. I am Dumbledore. I am Dumbledore. Yeah, we're going to go see uh, that. So we're going to go to the Home Depot and I'm going to buy a tool belt. Just because I've said so many times that I want to get one. But everything's going great here. Uh, we did uh, do our final measurement here. This should be 25 inches. And it's uh, a bit shy. One eighth of an inch. So not the end of the world. It's one eighth of an inch. We can just uh, have a one eighth of an inch gap over here. And then uh, that doesn't matter because we have all this extra space behind here. So it's gonna be perfect. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, the new tables are looking fresh. Everything's going good. I thought I was a little bit scared about this whole, you know, screwing the tables together, like, or screwing the tops onto the frames. But honestly, everything is going super smoothly. I've just got my counter strength drill bits and my pilot hole drill bit and my, uh, my other one for putting the screw in. Everything's going smoothly. One thing I'm using is a corded drill and I hate my life for it. I don't hate my life for it. But I uh, left my... Um, I, yeah, I left my battery powered drill, my Ryobi one that I'm using to drill the holes uh, at the rental. But it is what it is. This is what I'm using for now. 
continue. Everything is looking awesome. All the tabletops are screwed down. Yeah, now we're getting ready to do this here. So we're gonna keep this pillar here, right? Cause it's holding up our ceiling and it's got the names of our members. We've got to update this pillar. Also, we're gonna to have to relocate some names because you can see this that I've traced out here. We're gonna cut that out with a jigsaw and then we're gonna pull this so that this actually goes, you know, the pillar becomes part of the table, part of the Lego city. And we've got some really cool ideas, might be like a back alley, might be some minifigures like spray painting their name or putting their tag on the pillar. So we're really excited about that. But we think we've measured like eight times, erased some mismeasurements, and I think we're ready to pull out the jigsaw and cut that out. Now I can't bring this upstairs with my wife because Shazay is pregnant right now, as you all know. So I don't really want to haul this upstairs with her. Oh, I'm not going to because that's just too much strain on her. So she's going to follow me around with the, the uh, vacuum. I'm going to move probably some Lego out of the way there. And then I'm just going to cut this out with a jigsaw so that it can accommodate, or the table can accommodate the pillar. I have not used a jigsaw in a very long time. Not since like woodshop class grade seven. All right. Time to make a mess. There's gonna be sawdust everywhere. This is crazy. But yeah, we put the green tape here. Uh, Sting's recommendation so that it doesn't flake wood apparently. So I hope I did it right. Let's get this jigsaw lined up. I am not the jigsaw master. I've learned everybody that this is not a wood shop uh, YouTube channel. This is a Lego YouTube channel. <laughs> uh oh. We're gonna have to take a little bit more out. Okay, let's clean this place up. Let's get that fixed up. I'll have to take a little bit more out, I guess. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Look at that. We even put the malamine edging on the uh, cutout. And on this edge here, that is so sweet. It just looks so clean. Whew. All right, let's install the last tabletop. This is a work of art. <laughs> Look how good it looks. Everything is awesome. You know, like everything just seems to sit perfectly. There's a little bit of gap, you know, not much though. When you put some weight on these tables, it's gonna be minimal. I mean, there might have to be a few screws that move around or maybe more that get added, but like, yeah, it's, it's pretty much flawless. You know, like if there's a problem here, we can put a screw here and a screw here on the center runner, running board or something like that. But this is just awesome. Also, we went around and uh, wiped it all down with a wet cloth to make sure there's no sawdust here. There's a little bit of a gap here to ensure that this was 25 inches, but Nothing serious. I mean, a, a Lego base plate can bridge that, especially a Mills plate. No problem. Yeah, they, I don't know, man. Is a Lego base plate going to be able to bridge that? I don't know. I don't. It's a pretty big gap. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, so it looks pretty fresh, eh? Hey? It looks pretty awesome. And this is 40 inches. This is 60 inches. That's 60 inches. Over here, 40 inches. Along the whole back, 40 inches as well. 25 inch walkway, 20 inch walkway, 25 inch walkway. Originally we were concerned about this and how far it come over. We were thinking about reducing it by five inches, but look at that. There is no need to reduce that by five inches. And I think part of the reason is, is because there's these walkways right here, right? If it was solid, it might be a bit tight, but because it's not solid, then it's, it's pretty open. Now, of course, this is gonna go away. So this is gonna widen here as well. And one thing that I think that you know, makes it better and more user friendly is the fact that we have the overhang. It's approximately four inches. It varies. I mean, it's three and a half to five inches, depending on where you are to get it all aligned perfectly was nearly impossible. But I think that makes it a lot bigger because it gives you knee space, right? So like when you're walking through here, it feels a lot bigger and look at all the under table space. Like we fit all our modular buildings, our entire amusement park, uh, these Alex units over here, 
all of our beach stuff, all of our medieval stuff, all of our, you know, everything that was in the city, like residential, everything is underneath the tables right now. So when all of that stuff comes up, think about how much space is gonna be available for the taking under here. Also, when we do lighting under here, if we do lighting, depending on what we do under here, uh, we have power outlets all along this wall here. So we're gonna have access to power outlets, so it's gonna be way easier to run lights if we wanna run lights. That's a huge positive because when there's shelving going around the exterior, we didn't have access to doing that. So that's a huge plus, right? There's power outlets everywhere. So that's incredible. Now, what are we gonna do here right away? Oh, we're gonna start building the Lego city, of course. I think I'm gonna have some fun though with Lego trains before we do that. While I'm thinking about the layout and think about what we're gonna do with all of the Lego city stuff, I think we're gonna have some fun with Lego trains, I'm gonna set up a big train system and it's gonna go weaving through all these tables and stuff like that. Because the train can turn around on a 40 inch table, no problem. The train can turn around on a 16 inch table, no problem. When we go about building Lego City, we're probably gonna build some 15 inch platforms. And those platforms might go along this back wall here. So you gotta think if it's 15 inches and then there'll be like modular buildings up on top of those platforms or something like that, that might look pretty cool. Uh, we could do that over there. You might put the amusement park there. Might put modulars here and along the back wall and raised platforms. Might put residential here and might put the zoo and the campground and the uh, beach and everything over here. But that's really about it for today. Uh, I got to think about what I'm going to do here and then I'm going to have some fun with the trains. But we got the tables topped. It's looking phenomenal. Everything went according to plan. Everything is level. Big shout out to Stings Bricks. So everybody, thank you so much for coming on by. We cannot wait to get started building the Lego city on these Oh, very strong Lego tables that can support me. Now I know how I'm going to hang Lego art. I'm going to stand on the tables. <laughs> These things are built like a deck with uh, two by sixes. Pretty crazy, hey? Well, yeah, thank you so much for coming on by. And remember to like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for some more great stuff coming out here in the near future. Peace out.